This week, learn about transformations, which let you put text wherever you want to on your Matplotlib plots. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hi, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer at Unidata. On this week's MetPy Monday, we're going to talk about how to put text on matplotlib plots and control exactly where that goes, which is a little bit tricky and commonly misunderstood topic. So the first thing we need to do are a couple of imports here. So we're going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, and then we're going to use the magic matplotlib inline so that we see figures in the notebook. Next, we're gonna make a little bit of fake data to plot. So in this case, X is just going to be zero to nine. And for Y, we're gonna go ahead and use what we've learned about list comprehensions and make Y the square of X. So Y equals I squared for I and X. Next, let's make a figure. So plot.figure, I'm gonna specify a fig size here of 12 by 10. Make an axis object. So in this case, one row, one column, and the first panel. Then let's go ahead and call ax.plot x, y, Line style, in this case, I'm not going to want a connecting line, so it's the string none. And let's use a circle marker. So if we plot that, we see we get pretty much exactly what we would expect. Y is the square of X, and we have circle markers with no connecting line. Now, yes, you could use ax.scatter here and not have to specify that line style is none, but if you're not changing, the properties of the individual scatter points based on another variable, using plot and specifying line style as none is actually a much faster way to create the plot. A little tip to speed up some of your plotting scripts. So let's say that we're interested in this data point at x equals four, y equals 16. If we know the data coordinates, we can pretty easily go ahead and put some text there. So ax.text, 416 is my interesting data point. So we will label it as such. It's an interesting data point. And I'm gonna go ahead and specify a font size of 16. I don't like to use fonts a lot smaller than that. All right, so we have a label on our plot now. The left bottom of the label is at the coordinates we specified, 416. So you see we're intersecting the scatter point just a little bit here. Uh, with a little bit of padding on the left side of the eye there. So the first thing that we might wanna do is scoot that label over a little bit to the right. Well, that's pretty straightforward. We're just gonna make it 4.1, and that's a lot better. But I want my label to be vertically centered with this data point. So you can specify the keyword vertical alignment, all one word, or you can use the shorthand so you don't have to type the entire thing, VA. In this case, it could be top, bottom, or center. The default is bottom, but we want center. So if I specify VA equals center, now we get a plot that is a lot more like what I would expect and want to show in my paper. So now let's say that I want to put a label somewhere on the, the top center of my plot. I want to have some label for this particular subplot or some notes about this plot. So I'm going to change from interesting data point to top center label, my plot. All right, so now we're going to need to change these coordinates obviously, because these are data coordinates. So if we look at our plot, we can see that about four and a half and 80 is going to be where we're gonna want this label. So if we run it, well, that's not exactly what we wanted. Again, we're aligned on the left side of this. So we could specify the keyword argument horizontal alignment, or HA, 
equals center. And now we get the label that we would expect. It's at the top center of our plot. The catch to specifying your label position this way is if I were to later go back and decide that I want to show a smaller section of this plot, uh, say I'm trying to zoom in somewhere for a figure in my paper or a sub figure. So in this case, I'm going to set the X limit to be between a minus one and five. Well, now this is less good. We have the label still, but it's running off the right side of our plot and it's certainly not in the top center anymore. And that's because we're specifying the label position in data coordinates. So it's still centered on four and a half, just like we told it to here. What we really want here is to be able to specify a position relative to the axes, not in data coordinates. So what I want to be able to do is have something like X of 0 0.5, meaning the center of my plot going from zero to one, and a Y of something like 0 0.95, on the y going from zero to one. So these are normalized axes and links you can think of it as. Everything else there is gonna be the same. I want the horizontal and vertical alignment to stay center, but now I need to specify a transform. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this line down here. That's getting a little lengthy. And then we say transform equals ax, the name of the axes that we want to do the transform relative to, dot, trans axes. What this tells matplotlib is that I want you to take the x and y coordinates I've given you, treat them as axis relative coordinates, and apply this trans axes method to change them to whatever those that is in data coordinates. So now if I run that cell, the label is in the top center, and if I were to run this all the way out to an x of 100, the label is still in the top center of the plot. So this is a nice way to make your plots robust to being able to easily change them and still keep the same appearance. There's one other kind of transformation I wanted to point out that's useful when you're dealing with, say, lots of subplots. So if I have three or four subplots or panels in my plot, I might want to specify the position of the label relative to the entire figure instead of just the axes. So zero to one, being left to right and bottom to top of the entire figure that I'm gonna generate for my paper. In that case, we're going to change our transform. In this case, our transform is going to be equal to fig, the name of our figure, dot trans figure. And now you see that we're still at the center because half is still centered but we're now above the axes because we're 0 0.95 relative to the entire figure that's being generated here. So again, if you had multiple panels or wanted to position things outside the axes, say you wanted to put annotations over here or something like that, that would be a great way to do it is using the figure transform. I hope that you found this useful and that will help you make your figures more robust so you'll spend less time revising them and more things will just happen automatically for you. Don't forget to click like and subscribe down below so you know when more videos like this come out, as well as find us on Twitter. We are at MetPy and at Unidata. You can also find us on Facebook. Just search for Unidata. I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.